All right, this is Ken Roosevelt. We're going to talk about permutations, combinations, and the multiplication principle for counting. If you're having trouble with this, um, page 233 in your textbook is where this chapter begins. This idea here combines a bunch of things. And let me, let me start with this, the multiplication rule. Let's say you have, you're going to the beach. All right, and I'm going to do this for guys because I'm a guy, so don't think I'm being sexist. I'm just going to make it easy. you got two pairs of swim trunks, right? Now, um, you got to wear swim trunks. So if you just have swim trunks and you're going to the beach and that's all you're going to wear, then you have two outfits. Why? Because you have two choices here. you got your green trunks or your blue trunks. Okay? Now, if we add to that a shirt, Well, now you have, you still only have two outfits. Oh, wait, you're a man. You can go to the beach without a shirt. So let me go shirt, and we'll do a little of this, and circle it, put a line through it. That's for no shirt. Well, that brings it up to, instead of having uh, one choice there, we now have two, don't we? We can go with a shirt or without. So and now how many outfits do we have? Well, we have four. If it helps you to see it, I will go like this real quick. We have the green with the shirt, the green with no shirt. We have the blue with the shirt, and the blue with no shirt. So we have four possible outfits. All right, let's add a new element to it. Um, we can add a tank top. Let's say we have a tank top. We can bring in a tank top. Here's our tank top. <laughs> that is not very uh, well drawn. All right, anyway, so we bring in this tank top, and now what was two is now we have three choices over here. To pick our outfit, we can go, and these are all the ways. I'm going to draw them out. We can go that. We can go that. We can go that. So the green shorts has three choices of tops. The blue shorts have three choices so we have two times three total we have six that's the multiplication rule if we add a hat now I can go alright so we got a hat there it is now I can wear that hat or I cannot wear that hat so I can go hat or no hat and that's two more choices so now I have two times three times two you get it it's a multiplication rule um, the the total number of possibilities is the number of possibilities for this first event times the number of possibilities for this second event, times the number of possibilities for this third event. So it's 2 times 3 times 2 in this case. All right, using that rule, we're going to answer these questions that they give us. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, am I dealing with permutations, combinations, or a mix of both? And when I look at this, it says a catering surface offers three appetizers, five main courses, and four desserts. A banquet chairperson is to select two apps, three main courses, and two desserts for a banquet. So they're going to choose, out of the three appetizers, they're choosing two. Now, does it matter what order they choose them in? It might matter what order they list them on the menu, but we're not, he's just picking or she's just picking. So how many ways can this be done? The answer is three choose two. Um, five main courses, we're choosing three. So that's five choose three. These are all combinations. The order does not matter, so permutation is out. We're not going to have uh, three um, P two. Okay. And lastly, out of the four desserts, we're choosing two. So you can either calculate this using the formula, or you can use Pascal's triangle to figure out your combinations. I'm going down to the tenth row because that's my biggest n value. And in here, this is n equals one. This is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. If I'm choosing 0, I go to the first row. If I'm choosing 1, I go to the next row. So these are r equals 0, r equals 1, r equals 2, 
etc. Okay, so what are we looking for? Three choose two. Three choose two. That's right there. So my answer there will be three, and I'll prove it the other way. Five choose three. So I'm in the fifth row, and I'm choosing three. That's ten. And then um, four choose two. So so I'm in this row. Four choose two is six. So 3 times 10 times 6 is 180 is our answer. If you're up to this uh, topic, you know how to do combinations, so you know that it's, um, let's see, n choose r equals n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. So we're going to go 3 choose, uh, three choose 2 is 3 factorial over 2 factorial, which is just 2. Uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 factorial. You don't really need to write that. Times 2 factorial. There you go. So you can see easily how that comes out 3. This is going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. So that's 2 factorial. 3 factorial. And you can see 3 factorial cancels with the 5 factorial, leaving a 5 and a 4. 4 cancels with the 2 factorial, leaving a 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. So you can see how that equals 10. And lastly, we have 4 factorial over um, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, because 4 minus 2 is 2. And um, let's see, 4 factorial cancels with one of these guys, leaving a 4 times 3. And then 2 factorial cancels with the 4, leaving 2 times 3, which is 6. So you can see how each of those agrees with what we would get using uh, Pascal's triangle. So that's another option that you can use. N's go across, R's go down the row. Let's do another one of these guys. So hitting a new page. Serial numbers for a product are to be made using two letters followed by four numbers. If the letters are to be taken from the first seven letters of the alphabet, uh, with repeats possible, and the numbers are taken from the digits 0 through 9 with no repeats, how many serial numbers can be generated? We want a serial number made with two letters. So I put two dashes there, or fill in the blanks for letters, and followed by four numbers. So this is the order it goes in. The letters are to be taken from the first seven letters of the alphabet with repeats possible. So I have seven choices for the first letter, and because I'm putting the letters back in, I have seven choices for the second letter as well. Now, the um, the numbers are to be taken from the digits 0 through 9. So that's 10 different numbers with no repeats. So that's really, uh, we're choosing 4 out of 10, but the order matters. So it's not a combination, it's a permutation. And out of 10 objects, we're permutating 4. And... Um, we're not putting any of those numbers back, so it's a permutation. Okay, so that's our answer. It's going to be 7 squared, which is 49. And then our formula for permutations is n factorial over n minus r factorial, right? So it's going to be 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, which is over 6 factorial, which leaves you with 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Now I want to show you something with my fill in the blanks up here. How many choices do you have for the first number? You have 10. But now because 1 is used up, you have 9. Then another one's used up, so you have 8. Then another one's used up, so you have 7. So your answer is um, 49 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Whatever that is, that's your answer. I'll calculate it. Oh, no, I won't. I'll do it later. That's it. That's how it's done. I'll do another video. Stop.